all right guys this is what happens when you don't prune your tomato plants in a timely manner you have to operate on them i have an older video about pruning tomato plants and how i do it why i do it but i'll kind of recap in this video i'll link that one if you want to check it out it's from a couple years ago um, i live in arkansas currently uh, we are moving to another very hot and humid climate more more so than here and where i live uh, tomato plants can really struggle with the heat and the humidity they're just prone to multiple blights and funguses and issues when there's no airflow now I'm going to show you back here in the corner. I have one tomato plant that I put in a 4x4 four four foot bed right in the middle and I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to show you guys what it does if you do absolutely nothing. And I have had tomato plants that have come up in chicken bedding or compost, volunteers, that I never did anything to and I was actually able to harvest a good deal off of. So you don't actually have to interfere to get some tomatoes, especially cherry tomatoes. They are pretty resilient and will grow even if you don't do a lot. And the thing with a tomato plant that you don't do anything to, it gets so big that like you'll be able to harvest part of it and part of it is gonna get damaged, part of it is gonna get diseased. But the part that lays on the ground is gonna end up having issues. But if you're hoping for those big old slicers for a tomato sandwich, you definitely are going to want to intervene. Slicers are longer varieties. So like a cherry tomato is like a 60 day variety, which means it is going to produce fruit 60 days after the transplant is put in the ground. This is so confusing. I don't know why it's not more black and white, but I'm not the one who made the rules. Nobody asked me. Uh, a transplant, whenever you have a days to maturity that goes from the transplant is usually assuming the transplant is about six weeks old. So you can do that math from seed to uh, harvest, you're looking at 60 days plus six weeks. However, a slicer, the big meaty tomatoes, those are more like 80 to 90 day variety. So they just take longer, which means you have to keep your plants healthy and protected for about a month longer than the cherry tomatoes. Now you will find no shortage of people who are quick to tell you the only way to grow a tomato. I'm not one of them. Um, I think how you're gonna grow your garden is gonna be so vastly affected by your goals, your region, your time, all of that. But I can tell you how I grow a tomato and I get a lot of tomatoes and it works really well for me here in humid central Arkansas. And that is to prune my plants down to uh, one, it's called one main stem or one main leader or two main leaders. And I wanna talk to you just a little bit about this anatomy. I'm gonna end up going so thorough on this you don't need to go watch that old video. Let's take a look at this plant. So this plant's been lay laying along the ground. Uh, this is pretty young. This was a small plant when I put it in. And as you can see, the branches are all pointed off to the side because this plant was laid over. It was actually like this. And tomatoes are always, tomato plants are always going to grow upwards towards the sun. So since this was laying down, it was going up. I want you to notice here, do you see that little spot? That's because that was touching the ground. And so those are roots that are trying to grow out. Because a tomato stem will root all along you see these little knobs all along this thing it's just trying to grow roots and the way these grow is they have the main stem and they put off these branches and then right here i call it the armpit of the plant some people call it the crotch but i think armpit makes more sense because i mean this plant has many arms but i don't know many things that have multiple crotches so here we have what's called a sucker and so this little little guy grows in this armpit and as you can see all the way up this plant we have suckers so if you live in an area that especially is not a humid area you don't have to prune plants if you are going to do that you're going to plant them further apart probably about three feet apart I would say and that's where people use like tomato cages they'll make cages out of fencing or different heavier duty things <laughs> those cages they sell at the store those little things that are like two and a half or three feet and they're kind of cone shaped uh, those aren't great uh, maybe for some determinate varieties or like patio varieties of tomatoes that those would work but for anything substantial, I mean, indeterminates like this, they can get easily 10 feet tall, three meters plus. And I don't know who thought up those tomato cages. They're great for peppers. <laughs> but because I've been, why do you smell tomatoes? 
<laughs> you're looking for a tomato to eat. It's because I've been pruning them, honey. Look at my hand. It's covered in tomato tar. So a lot of people who don't prune their tomatoes, they'll use like big cages. They'll make them out of fencing, they'll make sturdier cages or get sturdier, sturdier cages or some sort of support like that. And their plants get real big and bushy, but they keep them upright and they're able to go in and harvest the fruit. And it is true that you are gonna get more tomatoes off of an unpruned plant. But a lot of times they, I, I don't want to make any blanket statements because I know some people have grown massive tomatoes on unpruned plants. But uh, in my experience and to people I've spoken to, a lot of times if you're wanting to get real big tomatoes, you prune it down so you get less fruits with larger weight. The benefit of pruning is that you can create more airflow. And in creating more airflow and bringing your plants down smaller, you can plant them closer together. So like I plant my tomatoes 18 to 20 inches apart because I know I'm gonna prune them down to a main leader and I'm gonna trellis them on these cattle panels. So side note, I also have a video about this. You can take these suckers, stick them in some water, grow roots, put it in the ground, and you have a new tomato plant. So what I just pruned off of these, I could I, I could at this point have about four more tomato plants. I'm just throwing them in the wall quicks because I don't need them. A lot of times whenever people visit my garden, especially earlier on the year, and they're like, hey, can I go look at your plants? I'm like, yeah, take some cuttings. And so people will be pulling pruners or pulling uh, suckers and sticking them in jars to make more plants. So right now this pruned plant looks kind of puny. It's laid over in the wrong direction. All those leaves will face up and it'll look normal in a little while. Here is one that is a little more advanced. It was a little bigger when I put it in and like that is a sucker. Some people will tell you, you wanna say hi Ben? Little shadow boy here, you want to take this and smell it. Smell it. Nice. Where is the sucker? That is the sucker. It's rich. Yeah, it's a big one, huh? Ben, do you know how to prune a tomato? Yeah. Yeah, you want to show everybody? You want to show off your skill? Here, you can do this one right here. I was just using my hands. I don't have any uh, snippers over here. I think you can do it. It's, this is not a big plant. You, don't, you only have to have the snippers if they're big. What's the point? Do you need to put it on the bottom? Yep, so we take down all the bottom ones. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. So you got all the lower ones. Now you want to get the suckers from the low part up. So you've got everything on the low part, which is exactly right. Good job. Do you remember what to do on the high part? Exactly right. Just the armpits. Very good. I'm so proud of you. Very good. I think that looks pretty good. Now let me show you. This is actually a sucker that got really big, but we don't have to pull that one off. We'll let this one, that'll split off and that'll be the two main leaders for this plant. So we'll give it two main stems. Well done, sir. Good tomato pruning. <laughs> you, hey, you are the best little gardener I know. You know that? So Benjamin, they suck resources. They're called suckers because they suck resources from the plant. So Benjamin has actually been out here in the garden with me pruning tomatoes. Last year he pruned them for the first time. And that's the first one he's done this year. Um, he remembered pretty well. Another thing he did that I hadn't explained yet, and you really want to do this whether you prune down to one main stem or not. Like even if you're going to let him bush, pull everything off the bottom 20 inches or so of your plant. Now we didn't go 20 inches up on this because this plant's not very big, but once they're like all the way up, everything on below this will be gone. You just have one stem there. And that is gonna make a massive difference to the longevity of your plant because uh, tomato leaves just don't like getting wet. And the ones by the ground are gonna get the splash back from the rain and even now, uh, you can see these lower leaves on all these plants. They got little holes in them. They've got, they're starting to get spots. And keeping diseased leaves off your plants for as long as possible is what you want to do. Now, I use this tape. Um, it's not actually tape, it's just real thin plastic that you can stretch. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not the only option I use this because it's super cheap, it's easy, and it's easy to remove. I have used twine before but it doesn't tear off easily at the end of the season. Uh, they make these little Velcro 
ties that you can like velcro a plant on uh, to a, a thing like this and reuse them year after year I think those are really really cool but not for hundreds of plants I, I don't think that's feasible I've used cut up strips of t-shirts and that also works pretty well but they they tend by like middle to end of the year they were like really stretched and started to break down a lot of my plants broke out of them or they la you know, some of them did that and some of them i had to cut off so while i do like to limit plastic use when possible uh, i really do just feel like this is the best thing for the job last year i did get these plastic clips sent to me and i used them in the back and i did like those they were really good i don't know if they're like 3d printed or something and i've tried a few different things i've tried where you just like do twine and kind of like attach the whole row up but it got too heavy for that and so i always end up going back to this it's cheap it's like six dollars a roll i'll put a link to it it's i, I just buy it online and I just tie these loosely. You just, whatever you use, you don't want to tie it super tight because your plant's going to grow and you don't want it to be cut into. And one thing I want to address because, um, I, you know, showing these massive branches, I just broke these off. <laughs> I'm telling you, 2021 is just going to be the year of do as I say, not as I do in the Roots and Refuge Garden. Uh, hopefully you can glean some encouragement from it that you don't have to do everything textbook in order to have a successful garden. Um, ideally you don't want to go tearing on your plants. It's better to cut them. Um, have I torn off many branches? I have. Today I tore off many branches. Ideally you want to prune them when they're young. It's less traumatic for them. But I just have pruned off very large parts of these plants and I've done that before. Uh, they might shock just a little bit but probably not uh, these plants are going to be pretty resilient um i do tell them i'm sorry when i do that i'm like i'm so sorry <laughs> i should have taken better care of you with cherry tomatoes i am a little bit more uh, lax on pruning them down to one liter a lot of times i'll let two or three main stems go let a few suckers get really big and uh, that's just because they're going to produce a whole lot of little tomatoes. I haven't seen that it makes quite as big a difference. On the big slicers, I try to stay on top of it. Because I've found that I do get a better yield of what I want, which is big healthy tomatoes, if I would prune them down and grow them this way. They last longer, they're healthier when they start producing, therefore they produce longer. And I just, I stay more on top of it with the big plants. So here is my non-pruned tomato plant i don't even know what variety this is it's some sort of cherry tomato and it's something that i had and i lost a tag to and i decided to do this experiment with it and as you can see um which it's a little weedy in here but like here's the main stem right here and it's fallen over and it like this right here is a sucker that got really big and it's and then oh yeah just leave it alone okay we're not going to pull anything off of it this is an experiment we're going to do this to learn how they grow so here you can see look at all these roots coming out on the bottom here that's pretty cool we've got some fruit set here it's pretty cool but also notice here we have just a little bit of yellowing some spot obviously down by where the ground is so we'll just see i've done this experiment before years ago i've shown what happens when you do this that was a slicer uh, and you end up getting some harvest you end up getting some ruined harvest but it does take up a lot of space now these tomatoes over here i have been pruning them more as i go just like pulling the suckers off which is ideal it's ideal to just walk down your tomatoes every morning and drink your coffee and pull the suckers off when they're like this big so if you are going to work on tomatoes you are going to end up with tomato hands i guess not if you worked in gloves but even still it would end up on your gloves and it's a lot easier to get off your skin uh this is just a residue it's a it's the resin tar that exists on the leaves and the stems of the tomatoes and handling them you get this now i got this much tomato hand residue uh, messing with one of those long rows of cherry tomatoes like five minutes of work just popping those things off but after i'm done working on my whole garden especially when i had the high tunnel full of indeterminates the tomato tar was caked so hard on my fingers that you could peel it off and this is really difficult to get off by just washing your hands with soap however 
You can use anything acidic. You can use lemon juice, lemon essential oil if you have that, uh, white vinegar works. And just put some of it on, rub it in really good, and just rub it all over and let it loosen that up, wash it, and then repeat it a time or two if you need to if you've got a really serious case of it. I mean, it's it, it's only, it's there's nothing wrong with it. it. It tastes bad, like if you ever, if you wash your hands and you, and you still go to eat something with your hands, you're gonna taste it, it's very, it's very, uh, sharp but um, but it it also it looks kind of bad and there have been many times that I've gone to a store or like I'm checking out at a gas station to buy gas and I'll go to hand the, the cashier something and I'll see a look on their face and realize that my hands are like dark 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 green on the fingertips so they're probably like what is this girl into <laughs> I will put links down below to some of the reference videos where I go more in depth in these things um, I got asked so many questions about this I'm not saying it's the only way to grow a tomato plant in my experience, when I do not prune pretty heavily, my plants are given to blight by like the end of June because it's humid here. And that's a bummer. You don't wanna lose your plants by June. That seriously is gonna cut into the harvest. And even with pruning, because of how frequently it rains here and how humid it is, um, you know, the tomatoes usually are struggling pretty hard by uh, the end of July and into August. And I notice that in many of the gardens that I drive past and the people that I talk to. But this is just one step you can do to help that problem. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Back to tomato maintenance for me. I bless you. Until next time. <laughs>